Hey, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Thanks for tuning in to the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. If you're interested in sponsoring my show, you can send me an email to the Mike Wagner Show at gmail.com, or you could also donate to the uh, podcast. Just go to the Donate Listen site, and um, you can also donate whatever you like. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. For those who are interested, Anchor can give you everything you need in one place for free, which means right from your phone or computer. We've got creation tools. allows you to record and edit podcasts so it sounds great. And those distribute the podcast for you so you can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple, Google, many more. And you can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the Anchor app for free or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show brings you famous celebrities and amazing people from all over the world. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Looking at a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Also on Radio Public and Anchor FM and watch the video on YouTube. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show channel and take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. That's the Mike Wagner Show. We're here with a wonderful host from New York City, the host of the really famous podcast, at uh, reallyfamouspodcast.com, also on YouTube, PlayPod, CA, Apple, Google, etc. She is a journalist with the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and more, also licensed psychotherapist in New York, studied at Columbia University, and has interviewed numerous celebrities, including Spike Lee, Seth Rogen, Sharon Stone, Mandy Moore, and more. And she's here to talk about the program and many more, how she got started. And ladies and gentlemen, live from New York, the really, really famous podcast hostess, Kara Mayor Robinson. Kara, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Mike. I'm really happy to be here. So thanks for having me on the show. Not a problem. So you're the host of the Really Famous Podcast at reallyfamouspodcast.com. It's on YouTube, PlayPod, CA, Apple, Google, etc. You're pretty much all over the internet. You're, you've been a journal, you're a journalist with the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and more. And also you're a licensed psychotherapist in New York, study at Columbia University. You've also interviewed uh, such famous celebrities like Spike Lee, Seth Rogen, Sharon Stone, Mandy Moore, and etc. We're here to talk about your, um, your work and everything. Before we do that, uh, tell us how I got started. How I got started? Well, I mean, I got started in this thing and then that thing and then the other thing. And eventually it's this thing that you're talking about right now, which is really famous. <laughs> It was a it was a windy road to get where I am today, but let's see if I can give you a short version. I started my life being obsessed with television and movies. I, I just have always loved both. I love being entertained by both. And I planned on studying that when I got to college, but the classes were all taken, the prereqs that I needed. So I ended up studying accounting, getting a degree in accounting, trying it out for like a year, not liking it going to grad school, getting a master's in developmental psychology, opening, putting out my shingle and becoming a psychotherapist. And Mm. when I was a psychotherapist, I started uh, writing on the side and I loved it so much. I kept going and I ended up sort of finding myself in this uh, area, this concentration of doing profiles and interviews with celebrities, mostly actors. And I loved my conversation so much, but they were too long and too rich to include in a short little article. And uh, my frustration led me to the idea of starting a podcast. And that's how Really Famous began. So kind of a long story, but uh, hopefully I didn't go on and on too much. No, you're fine. You can talk all you want. And I was just going to ask as well, too, what was the moment that got you into um, psychotherapy and everything? 
Well, that was actually um, sort of like midway through this crazy path that I took. I was working at Comedy Central, but not in comedy and not in entertainment. I was working in the ad sales department. So I took my business degree, my accounting degree. And when I knew that I wanted something that was different, I thought maybe if I get into an entertainment company, maybe I'll be okay. So I was at Comedy Central doing this work and I was not okay because it was still super boring. Um, but it was okay because I would sit in my office and a lot of my coworkers would come in during the day, put their feet up and start uh, unloading all of their problems on me. And oh my what gosh. should I do about this? You're never going to believe what happened last night. Guess what he did about this? And I loved it. I mean, I ate it up. Every minute of it was a blast. And at the time I was also, I guess I would go home at night and watch TV land or something. I would watch the Bob Newhart show reruns. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, you know, I could do what I do during the day with my coworkers and do what Bob Newhart does to some degree, sit on a couch and listen to people uh, talk about their stuff. And I would really like that. And so that's when I decided, okay, back to school I go. I go to Columbia and I get my master's. That is amazing too. And uh, what are some most common problems that you encounter in is being a psychotherapist and what is like the strangest or most difficult you've ever encountered? Uh, that's a good question. Let me see. I mean, I think the biggest struggle is probably when somebody comes to see you and they're there because they know they should be, or somebody recommended that they go, that they maybe like take on therapy, but you know that they just don't want to do it. So that is almost impossible to work with. It's very rare that a therapist can help someone who's very resistant to the idea of therapy. So like that, I would say is the biggest issue. Um, there were little things too, like, last minute cancellations and whatnot that would be kind of annoying. Um, but I would say the biggest problem would be, yeah, it would be that. Not really willing to do the work. Ah, I see. So it's not a particular problem that you encountered and uh, how you got through it or the most common one. It's just the, the fact that there's last minute cancellations or, you know, you're working with people who have been forced to go and not go and everything like that. That sounds like a pretty common frustration for you. Yeah, I think that's pro that maybe I mean, I can't speak for other therapists. And I really didn't know that many therapists when I was an active therapist, to tell you the truth. But uh, I, I would be surprised if the biggest complaint, uh, or maybe not complaint, but struggle for a lot of therapists is that fact that if somebody's not motivated to do it, it's really tough to help them mm -hmm. as as something as well, too. And of course, you know, and of course, you know, I think a lot of us have problems as well, too. We're not going to talk about that. We'll talk about uh, some of your show as well, too. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking a budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. Also, check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Radio Public, Anchor FM, and also on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show. Also, take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with host Kara Mayer Robinson, the host of the Really Famous Podcast at reallyfamouspodcast.com and YouTube, Play Pod, CA, Apple, Google, and more. And let's talk a little bit about your uh, podcast as well, too. And um, tell us how you got started with the podcast and what was the name about the Really Famous Podcast? You wonder, is it really that famous or you just want to get attention? Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So I started the podcast when I was a journalist and felt like there was so many great things and great conversations I was having with these fascinating, fabulous, famous people. And I just could only use a fraction of my conversation in a written piece, whether it was online or in print. So this is like at the time when I'm writing for the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Travel and Leisure, the Hollywood Reporter. And um, I would have these like long, great conversations. And it was actually my husband. I came home one day. I was at Tim Gunn's house. Tim Gunn uh, was the host of Project Runway 
on a lifetime in Bravo. And I was at his apartment for maybe three hours working wow. on a story for the times. Yeah. I mean, sitting there talking about good, good things. Like I was wrapped. I mean, of super engaged, great stories. He was telling me he was revealing all of his feelings, his true feelings about the judges who he works with on the show. And he was talking about his mom and his sister and his personal life. And it was so fascinating. And I thought it is really a shame that I can't put all this out there for everybody to enjoy because it is such a good talk. And so I came back like on cloud nine, came home and my husband, I was telling him about it. And he was like, you know what you need to do. You need to start a podcast. And he was like Mr. Podcast at the time. He had been trying to get me to listen to podcasts forever. I finally uh, started probably right before that. And then I thought, you know what? I don't know who I am to start my own podcast, but I'm going to do it. And I did it. So it did not, the name did not come easily. I tell you what, we spent a lot of time, my husband and I, my friend Christy, who was visiting from California at the time, mm -hmm. my kids, we were all going back and forth. What about this name? What about that name? And the reason why I finally settled on Really Famous was not because the podcast is really famous, but because my guests are. So famous had to be in there because those are my guests. I knew I was going to talk to the same people I was writing about. They'd be celebrities, mostly actors, but not only actors, um, also athletes and uh, like TV stars, personalities, whatever. And, but I wanted to get to the real person. So that is always my goal. Like I'm not interested in that superficial glossy coating that you see in other stories about celebrities. I am not like the late night talk show kind of host where you're going to see these funny, hilarious, rehearsed mm -hmm. uh, bits. So I want to know the real person behind the name. So that's why really came into play. So it's really famous. They're famous, but I'm after who they really are. That is amazing. What are some of the questions that you normally ask to get to the uh, really, really famous part, like deep down inside of them? Well, um, yeah, I don't really have specific questions that do that as much as I think my technique or my style is more about just getting into an authentic conversation with each person. So whatever that may be, whatever may take us there, it's different every time. So I don't usually come in with a set of exact questions or like similar questions even. I just go in trying to just get a connection and like see where the conversation goes where I really get to know the person and in a way it's a little weird but it's kind of similar to if you were to go on a first date with somebody or maybe mm -hmm. a second date and then a third date so I'm kind of in like the third date maybe where I'm trying to like really see what this person is all about and uh, that's hopefully and usually actually where we end up so yeah. I do have one question, though, that I do ask a lot of people at the very end. I wrap it up. But this is after I already have gotten to know the person. And if uh -huh. they haven't already answered this question, then I like to ask them who they really are versus what their image is. Mm -hmm. that is. That is something, too. And I, I wish I could do that. But then I'm afraid some people might slap me. So <laughs> <laughs> I have not been slapped yet. I'm happy to report. But I guess there's a first time for everything, right? I, I, I have to say that, too, and uh, wouldn't mind being on your show, and we can talk about that later as well, too, and um, also with some of the uh, celebrities as well, too, that uh, you maybe tell me about um, some of the ones you enjoyed, like, say, Spike Lee, Seth Rogen, Sharon Stone, and uh, who do you thought were the most fascinating? Oh, my God. Everybody's fascinating. I know not everybody, but almost everybody to me is fascinating. Like I am fascinated by people in the first place, like no matter what. So I do find that to be the case with almost everybody I have talked to. But some people open up more easily than others. So like I do tend to get a little bit more fascinated by people who are more, more open and don't have like really thick barriers or like brick walls to protect themselves from being known. Um, oh my gosh, so many fascinating people, seriously. So, so I don't know if you want a specific person. Ed Asner was really cool to talk to. I like Ed Asner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chaz Palminteri loved my conversation with him. He opened up about having dyslexia, about the beginning of fame and how he was almost like, he knew that something crazy was going to happen and that a Bronx tale was going to 
blow up. And so he started seeing a therapist to figure out what to do and how to navigate. That to me was fascinating. Jason Ritter, who is John Ritter's son, he was Mm -hmm. in the show Parenthood and Gravity Falls. So Jason really opened up about what it was like growing up as the child of a celebrity. And that was fascinating. Such a regular, like real guy. But I, I saw his struggles. And to me, I was just uh, really moved by him. Michael Imperioli, who played Christopher Moltisanti on The Sopranos, another really interesting guy. People think he's like that tough guy from New Jersey, but he's actually a very cerebral, artsy kind of person. Um, I found him really interesting, and he came back on the show a second time. Caesar Milan, if you have a dog, you know who I'm talking about. If you don't, oh, yeah. you probably don't. I, I, I remember Caesar Milan. Who is it? The Dog Whisperer? Or something? He is the Dog Whisperer. That's exactly yes, right. Yes, like, that's right. I yes. remember that show. I so remember. He, yeah, he made it big. I mean, he was born in rural Mexico to a like farm family um, with not a lot of money. And he set his eyes on going to America and becoming big. So it didn't just happen by accident. He knew what he wanted and then he kept going and going and his persistence is incredible. I was so inspired by his story and like seriously amazed by what it took, but it's like he knew he was going to be a famous Hollywood dog trainer and it took a while and took a lot of struggles to get through, but he did it. So uh, another fascinating person, Damon John uh, from Shark Tank. Do you watch Shark Tank? I've watched a few episodes and my kids are bringing the sharks as well, too. My wife is a shark lover, too, believe it or not. And, of course, I, I talked to somebody during Shark Week as well, too, who started the whole Shark Week, which was Jaws. But he called it the fish movie. He didn't like Jaws at all. <laughs> okay, well, I love Jaws, but Shark Tank is not actually about sharks. Shark Tank is a business show where it's a like a reality show, a competition almost, where there are wealthy investors. And then if you have a new business that you want to pitch and you need money for, you go on stage and you pitch your business or your product to these, uh, they're called sharks, but really they're just very wealthy investors who have made a lot of businesses succeed like over the top. So Damon John is one of the investors. So he's not an actual shark, but they call him a shark. It's called Shark Tank, not on the uh, Animal Planet or wait, what is it? Discovery Channel? What is Shark Week on? I don't even know. I think it's on Discovery Channel, and I think it's Animal Planet. Some, I think it might have been National Geographic. It's somewhere around there. And, and when we think of Shark Tank, it seems like some people want to make, make it clear. Now I remember it's like every time I think shark, it's like, ah, fishies, you know that. <laughs> so, oh, my goodness. Well, Jaws and, was a good movie for sure, though. A scary one, though. You don't want to see that when you're too young. <laughs> <laughs> but then they also figured out later, too, that you know Jaws was just like a, a mechanical fish that it was just so difficult to uh, piece together, operate, and everything. And I think it ended up in a museum and almost uh, got destroyed. But, um, but, but yeah, it's just, I have to say, it's just the start of the whole thing and all the other offshoots. And um, we saw the mag, and, and I said, boy... I don't know what to say about Jaws, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steven Spielberg knew what he was doing, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. And, of course, you also have Mandy Moore, Christina Aguilera, and... Um, and, and I'm trying to see who else is on there. It's like I'm I'm having a uh, what is a writer's block. And uh, well, well, what do you but, watch, Mike? Mike, you tell me what you watch. What are you into? What kind of movies and what kind of TV shows? Ah, that's a good question. We have Netflix. You know, that's for one. We don't have cable because of the Bruce Springsteen song, 57 channels and nothing. I can't find a bloody thing in 92. And then you have like over a thousand channels and still nothing on. And of course, I just watch your typical news and, um, you know, try to catch a little bit of sports. And and now, now I'm trying to barely was one series that I was watching. But then I watched my boys, the Clone Wars, which is the Star Wars cartoon. So we watched some cartoons and um, some classes as well, too, as you could tell, you know, being a sports fan and creative person. So go figure on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, (laughs) sure. You're human also. But okay, so I always give out also I on the podcast, I talk about TV shows I love all the time and movies because a lot of my guests are obviously actors. They're in the business. They see movies and TV shows too. And we like to break them down and like compare favorites and whatnot. So I watch a lot. So if you're looking for something that you're going to like, I'm not great at recommending sports. I have to admit, I had Mm -hmm. Scott Hamilton on my show, who's the figure skater. But other than that, 
sports are probably not my expertise. Um, but in terms of recommending a TV show, all right, so you've got Netflix. So what is one of the last things that you loved on Netflix? Do you remember? Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, Guardians of the Galaxy. All right, you're you're reaching my spots that I'm not really uh, that I don't watch a lot of things in. I'm not my that's not really my genre. But let's keep going. What else? Okay, I, I'm just trying to think here. I'll have to, I'll have to write it down a list later on. I have to give it to you. So, so okay. right now, right now, as we try to think about um, Netflix and everything else, you listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the MikeWagnerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit our line at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. Also, check our Facebook page, Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Also on Radio, Radio Public and Anchor FM. And subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. And take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with the host of the Really Famous Podcast at ReallyFamousPodcast.com. Kara Mayer Robinson. She's a journalist um, with the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, etc. Licensed psychotherapist. And we were just talking about Netflix. And the one just came up since my youngest is going to school now as a freshman. And my and my second youngest is uh, going to be um, going to trade school as well, too. You know, get involved in cooking. The one thing I do like is that I like the Miss. Was it Mr. Iglesias? It's the um, what, what's that? Uh, he's like a teacher or something. It's like I can't think. I don't it's like even he's, know a, what he's that a teacher. Is. Oh, oh, that's okay because Gabriel Glaces, he's a comedian. He, he's a, you know, I'm not fat, I'm fluffy. Yeah, I mean, no, I know who he is. I know that they call that his nickname is Fluffy or something, right? Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. Yeah, I'm not fat, I'm fluffy. I, I mean, that that's the best imitation I could do, but <laughs> he, he, he has that, uh, that, that series out there where, he, where he's a teacher and actually teaches a lot of lessons. And then there was, um, all these cooking shows over there, you know, Guy Fieri and, um, and I think there's a uh, Bobby Flay and um, was a cooking competitions or something or world's best bakers, best chefs or bad chefs or whatever it is. It's somewhere along those lines. You know, we get into that and also architecture as well. My son loves architecture, building houses, designs and everything else. You know, unusual homes, small homes, everything on Netflix, anything to do with that. You just pick and choose. That's what you like about it. Yeah, you know, I, for a while I did get into the Great British Baking Show. I had a guest on my show, Liz Lang. She's a fashion designer. She was on early in the podcast, and she we shared all of our favorites, and she said, you've got to watch the Great British Baking Show. And I did, and I was hooked, and I'm not alone. I think a lot of people actually love that show. There's no real drama except with the food, but it's so <laughs> good. Another chef, I had a chef on Really Famous. Uh, her name is Alex Guarnaschelli. I think she's mostly a chopped chef, but she's also an iron chef. Um, so she's you watch that Iron Chef, yes. Yeah, yeah. So Alex was on my show. So she was really interesting too, actually. She's another person who was really fascinating because she had an interesting time growing up as an only child and had this love of good quality food that she inherited from her parents who were very smart, super smart. And uh, she went into uh, becoming a chef and um, yeah, actually at the time her father had just died and she got really oh emotional my. about that and kind of shared her feelings about that. So yeah, it was, it was kind of interesting to hear the other side of her too, not just how she is on camera with the food. That was amazing. I still think about that, uh, baking show, ready, set, bake. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You know. Oh, that, that was just my favorite. And most of the food that just makes me want to cook. I will tell you. <laughs> Are you a good cook? Um, my wife and I share the duty. She does a breakfast. She does better breakfast. We'll split the lunch and I'll cook the dinner because by the time then she's tired. I come home. It's like, I just want to do something for once. It's like, we've come up with all kinds of great stuff, you know, you know, stir fry. I'll go to the grill or my, my son will like to put something in the oven and then desserts. It's like, it's a free for all. It's like, you know, bake whatever you want. So that's how it is. But the pets are not involved. That's the thing. The only thing they do is eat them up. That's it. They don't contribute. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good thing. You don't want the fur in your uh, food, right? 
Exactly. <laughs> 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 and, and, and of course, you can just uh, tell us more about uh, work when we find the really famous podcast besides really famous podcast dot com and YouTube. Tell everybody where else can you um, where else can they watch it? Sure. So Really Famous Now has two major outlets, well, major components. I have a long-form podcast, so I do a deep dive, usually more than an hour, with one celebrity, and that comes out every week. That's every Monday. There's a new podcast uh, through Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, iTunes, iHeartRadio, you know, all of the pretty much every podcast app you can get that through. And then I also have a new video every week. So what I'll do is a lot of people like to actually see the person I'm interviewing or see us talking. So now at the end of every podcast, I do take some time to do a video and sometimes I actually record the whole thing. And I put that on the really famous YouTube channel. So you can find that by opening up YouTube or going to youtube.com slash really famous. So you search for really famous. There it is. Or you can get links to everything on really famous podcast.com. So every week, every Monday is a podcast. And usually on Sundays, I release a new video. And then I have all kinds of video fun on social media. I'm like constantly, if I'm going near a TV studio or something or uh, on location, like I was in front of the Brady Bunch house a couple months nice. ago. And I was like, oh, I have to just actually say something to for everybody who would be interested. And I jumped in front of the house and a friend of mine whipped out her phone and took a little video and I gave some background on what was going on with the Brady Bunch. So I always post those on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. That is amazing too. And uh, what, what are some of your upcoming shows or uh, upcoming guests? Well, I have the next couple of weeks are going to be exciting because I have Danny Aiello returning to the show. So Danny Aiello was on once before. Um, he is one of my favorite favorite people. He's so real. And we really have, we just hit it off so well. So he was on the show about two years ago. And then I went back to see him in the middle of him filming a new movie. And I did take out the camera for all of that. So I have an hour to watch on video and about an hour and a half on audio. So Danny Aiello is coming up. And then also I was just in LA a couple of weeks ago and I went to see Beverly D'Angelo. If you wow. watch the vacation movies, you know, she's mm -hmm. the um, Mrs. Griswold. So, oh I have a great yes, yes, Chase. Oh my gosh, that 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 funky wagon they have. Yes. Oh my lord, wood <laughs> trim and everything else. Oh, that's my right. Gosh. So that's Bev, and she was the Griswold mom slash wife. And so we got into a really good conversation. She also factoid was with Al Pacino for about seven years, and they had kids together. They have wow. twins who are now teenagers. And so interestingly enough, she talks to me about that as well. And their son was there that day and helped out with the video camera, which was very cool. So Beverly D'Angelo is also coming up on the show in September. Oh my goodness. I did not know that. And I think Al Pacino is going to be with um, Robert De Niro, if I'm right. They're going to be on The Irishman, I think, coming out in October, I believe. So. Well, you're close to being right. They are definitely together, and it's Scorsese, and it's Joe Pesci, and Harvey Keitel, and they're all in The Irishman. Here's what happened. This actually just got settled. I think it was yesterday, maybe two days ago. So Netflix was actually the studio that ultimately gave Scorsese the money to make this film. So they made The Irishman for Netflix, but Netflix and the movie theaters across the US and I guess globally got into a little bit of a, how can we agree on where this movie is going to be released? Netflix, of course, wants it for Netflix, so all the subscribers can watch it right away, whereas the movie chains like AMC, they want to show it in their theaters for a long enough period of time that they can make a lot of money on it. And then what Scorsese really wanted was both. So maybe we'll give the theaters a very short run, maybe a couple of weeks, and then we'll give it to our Netflix subscribers. But the chains didn't go for that. They really wanted to be able to have it for longer. So now the, the way it's going to go is this. It's going to be November 1st, that it's available only in independent movie theaters. And then November 27th, it will be available on Netflix. September 27th, I believe, it's actually going to have the premiere, though, at the New York Film Festival. Not to wow. be confused with Tribeca, but that's a history of the Irishman. But so many people are so excited about it because of all of these people who mm -hmm. are working on it. 
And, and there was a guy that I interviewed on there. I think he plays one of the guards, Scott Maginelli, who I interviewed. And he says that's probably the biggest thing other than working at Giant Stadium as a security guard. And, um, you know, just being with those two and um, interacting, it was just amazing. And, of course, surprisingly, that you think the two egos would clash at each other. They actually get along very surprisingly. Yeah, I think I think I, I I'm not surprised by it only because of their personalities. They are so different. I think I've seen Robert De Niro in person a few times. I have never talked to him personally, never had him on the show, never interviewed him for a paper or anything like that for a magazine. Um, but he is a very subtle kind of subdued laid back, not very talkative person. And Al is the opposite. I think very gregarious and likes to laugh and smile. And, uh, but I think they've all been so successful together, really, that it's not even a competition, which is so cool. And they're all really just legends, living legends, all of them. And of course, Joe Petchy, one of my favorites as well, too. He's in it too. I went, where the heck it, has he been all this yes! time? I know he was like in a semi-retirement, I think, and then came out of retirement, I think. I Don't hold me to that. I'm not positive about my facts there. But I think they, they really did kind of bring him out for this film. So that's really exciting. I mean, the last time I think I remember seeing him in something was like Home Alone, but probably not, right? Casino, was he in Casino? Yes. He, that was probably he, after Home Alone. He, what, he, he was in Casino, and I remember it was three hours, and we were just like... Um, Okay, when should we air part one? When should we air part two? I said, you know, the heck with it. Let's just watch the whole thing. I remember that. And he was also, I think, in, um, oh, what was the other one? It was uh, My Cousin Vinny. He was most famous yes. for that. And that's where Marissa Tomei became famous. And I still remember the uh, the, the line it says, yeah, you got the Ute, you know. The, the ute. two Utes. That's the right. The two Utes. What yeah. is a Ute? Oh, that was um, that was uh, Ed Gwynn, the judge. He goes, a Ute? What's a Ute? Oh, that was so, so good. I am with you. So good. That was one of the best, the best moments in film for oh sure. Oh my gosh. And, and I still remember that movie. We watched that and watched it again. I'm like, man, what was so funny about it? And it was just Ed Gwynn interacting with, um, you know, Joe Petchy. I remember the biggest put down where Joe Petchy gave like the biggest speech. And then Ed Gwynn goes, that was very lucid. Overruled. That was such a good movie. I absolutely love it. I mean, <laughs> come on. And Marissa Tomei was great too, right? That's that's where she Ralph got her Macchio, start too. Ralph Macchio, so good. And Fred Gwynn, give me a break. All of them, hilarious. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And and I think I'm starting to dig as well too. Of course, you know, we know you're not in the sports, but then uh, Major League is celebrating its 30th year. It's that baseball movie that was starring Corbin Benson. There was Rene Russo, and it's about the Cleveland Indians, you know. They're trying to sell the team. They end up going to win the World Series. They have the Duke on there, played by Willie Muller. I had him on, and he said that the cast characters were great, and Corbin Benson's like, dust my chair, dust my chair, and okay, everybody so just cracked up. <laughs> that movie, it was one of my favorite movies when it came out. I guess I was a teenager or something, but I do remember, I wasn't that into sports, it's true, but Major League is another one of those like classic movies that everybody loved. It was so funny. It wasn't uh, Charlie Sheen in that too? Yes, Charlie Sheen, that's right. And I want to say um, Tom Berenger, was he, I think he was in it too. Tom Berenger, yes. Will Billy Mays Hayes was the character's name, mm -hmm. somebody's name. And and then there was um uh Wesley Snipes. Oh that was Wesley one of his, Snipes. Uh, first few first few roles actually, and I think he was Willie May Hayes or um one of the characters he was at the bottom and I looked him like holy cow, Wesley Snipes? And I said that um you, you know, play a by a very young Wesley Snipes. And I looked at it like I did not know Wesley Snipes played a major league. You think of Wesley Snipes as a bad guy shooting people. And here he was in major league. I'm like, wow, that's right. And he was so good in major league. That's right. I forgot Wesley Snipes. Wait, what is the movie that, uh, what was it? New Jack city. Was he in that? I believe I he, was... he, I believe he was, he was in new Jack city. And I think he was in a few others too. And I think he was in blade. I think that was his most famous one, the blade movies. Okay, so I didn't see the Blade movies, but I did see New Jack City because New Jack City is Mario Van Peebles' film, I believe. He made it, directed it, and was in it as well. And I actually had him on the show twice. So he wow. is a super interesting guy as well. Yeah, he, that was his movie. Um, but I don't remember us talking about Mario Van Peebles, but I think uh, he should be in more right now. What happened to him? Where is he now? 
That's a good question. I think we'll have to talk about that another time as well. Maybe put him on the list. Of course, you know, I enjoy talking to singers as well, too. And who would you say your favorite singer was? Well, I think, I mean, I've had people on the show who do sing, um, but I'm not a huge music person, so I don't don't really necessarily seek out many singers. But obviously the most famous, and she wasn't on Really Famous, but I wrote a cover story about her um, for WebMD magazine was Christina Aguilera. So I I think I did throw a name out there yes yeah so she um was very interesting but at the same time it was one of those things where uh, you know i'm writing a story about her so you can't see the whole conversation or you can't listen to the whole conversation about her but she was pretty impressive too i remember feeling like after i talked to her um she was nothing like i had expected her to be like she's really smart and knew what she was doing and again a lot of successful people that i have have spoken to they have made me realize just how much work they've all put into their careers these things they don't get where they are just by accident it really takes devotion and um i guess you have to be able to not just take no for an answer but you have to believe in yourself and keep going even every time you fall down and she fell down a lot but she i was impressed with who she was and how she really um, knew where she was taking her career so pretty cool that was amazing too and i was and i was just going to ask you too was, was she married at one point to Eric Johnson or still married? I'm trying to think. Or did I get a crossover with somebody else? I have no idea. I do not remember. I talked to her. It was probably a couple of years ago. So she's not as fresh on my brain. Um, I don't know. I'm sorry, Mike. Oh, that's okay. I mean, I just throw it out there as well, too. And, of course, you had Spike Lee on there. And you can uh, just tell us a little bit about him. A fascinating director. Oh, Spike Lee. So, yeah. So Spike Lee, I met um, for the first time right before he the Oscars, actually, this year. So I went to his offices in Brooklyn where he makes a lot of his films. And I'll tell you what, I was definitely intimidated. I don't get starstruck very easily. But when I was going there, I was very nervous, like for a week ahead of time. I remember thinking, I am so nervous to meet Spike Lee because he is just like a force to be reckoned with and also just such an artist. I mean, his films are works of art, no question. Um, So I was a little scared and uh, nervous. And when I met him, I'll never forget, like, he was nice to me, told me to go sit down, put my jacket down, whatever. And I did, but I felt like I was just shaking the whole time. But um, he wasn't that into the interview, I don't think. And um, I was really worried throughout the whole time that maybe this is not the greatest interview I've ever had. He's really not, doesn't like me as an interviewer. And then I started talking to him about which film was most impactful on him as a child child. And he told me, bye bye, Birdie. And the reason was that his mom, when he was only six years old, his mom took him to see bye bye, Birdie at Radio City Music Hall in New York. And he said the experience of seeing that as a six year old was so major. And seeing it at Radio City, especially was so major that he didn't even realize it until years later, after he had already made the film do the right thing, that the opening sequence in Do the Right Thing, where Rosie Perez is dancing, and it's just like one camera is just kind of still, and she's dancing all around in front of the camera. That was actually inspired by the first scene in Bye Bye Birdie, where Anne Margaret is dancing, and the camera is kind of still at the same angle. So he realized that after he made the movie, that that actually was inspired by that. And I thought that was the coolest story. And then I had told Spike after that a story about how I had taken my dad a couple of years ago at the end of the Tribeca Film Festival, closing night, they uh, had a special screening of The Godfather and The Godfather Part Two at Radio City Music Hall, followed by a panel on stage with everyone. I mean, talk about wow. De Niro and Pacino and Diane Keaton and uh, James Kahn, Francis Ford Coppola, Talia Shire, uh, who am I forgetting? Um, Robert Duvall. They were all there. So I took my dad and I told Spike the story that even though I was afraid that my dad, who's in his 80s, would be too tired to sit in Radio City for like 
literally seven or eight hours because each right. Godfather film is long. And then the panel. And I told my dad, who's a big Godfather fan, that uh, this, by the way, is a story within a story. Um, I told my dad, who's a Godfather fan, huge. I said, why don't we just go see the Godfather part two and then the panel forget the original Godfather. My dad's like, what are you crazy? We're going to see both. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why, we went. Young, why? I yeah. stick with my hands. Right. That's an offer I can refuse if you're not going to, you know, you don't want to see all of it. So we went and we saw both movies and much to both of our surprise, my dad's and mine, the watching the movies at Radio City with all of those Godfather fans together was the most incredible experience. I can't even say enough about it. I've seen it on, you know, on film, on TV a million times, each of those movies, but it was nothing like seeing it at Radio City Music Hall. The panel wasn't great, but never mind that. So I told Spike that story about my experience at Radio City. And I think that he actually softened and we kind of bonded a little bit. This is Spike and me. And then by the end of the interview, I was, I was thanking him. I said, thank you so much for this interview. And he said, wait, wait, come here. And then he took me out of the room that we were in and he gave me a little tour of his building, of his studio, his, his offices, because he has all these things hung up on the walls, this memorabilia, like these giant blown up movie posters of like La Strada. And it was signed to Spike Lee from Fellini, like so much of this really amazing it's really a museum it was so cool and he walked me through one room of these things and then i said wow this is just i am just blown away and he said wait wait come over here and then he takes me to another area so i think that was probably an okay sign that it was all right after all but uh during the interview itself i was really thinking uh <laughs> spike lee is not a fan of cara Mayer robinson but it all worked out that, that sounds amazing too and of course maybe think of some of the um past movies as well too and um and i'm getting an idea of what your show is all about like you hit upon a few things you run with it hit upon a few more and run with it and hit a few, few more and run with it and that thing's just fascinating very unique style and um you know speaking of podcasts and everything what do you consider oh seth rogan i was going to mention that speaking of podcasters the number one podcaster in the nation just uh tell us all about seth rogan Wait, Seth Rogen is not the number one podcaster. Oh, oh, not anymore. Okay, I thought he. No, was. are you confusing him with Adam Carolla, maybe, or Joe I, Rogan? Oh, you're I, confusing him with Joe Rogan. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, it's that's like, okay. Oh. Joe Rogan is massive. He well, okay. So you might know Joe Rogan because he. I mean, the reason I knew Joe Rogan was honestly only because he was in that show Fear Factor. I think he was the host of Fear Factor so many mm -hmm. years ago, and then he was on the show News Radio. But right now he is. Is so big. He has like, I don't know, a bazillion serious hardcore fans. And he, I don't even know what to say. I've only listened to his show once when he interviewed Elon Musk. Um, but I think he's got a major following. I think it's probably mostly men, but I don't know that for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I have never met him. Seth Rogen is a comedian who started out in like freaks and geeks and then became uh, famous with movies like, uh, why am I forgetting? What was that movie where the girl, oh, Knocked Up, Knocked Up. Do you remember that no movie? Knocked Up, that's it, yes. Knocked up. That I think was kind of what what uh, pivoted him up to the towards the top, and he's made him. He has a movie out right now, actually, and it's doing quite well. Did you see that? I forget what it's called, but it's about these teenage boys or like thirteen year old boys or something. I forget the name of the movie, but it just came out a few weeks ago, and uh, people are really seeming to enjoy that movie. And I think he produced the movie, and he's in it as well. The only thing I could think of is Good Boys, but that's really that's it. About that's it. it. That that's is. it. Wow. Is that the okay. name of it? Good Boys. That's Good the new boys. one. Yes. I had someone tell me about that. I can go see Good Boys. I'm like, what's that about? Yeah. I think <laughs> it's like, I think it's basically like a coming of age kind of thing where they, it's like raunchy jokes and crazy situations where they're trying to figure out these things that are like just above their age level or something, I believe. But it's, it's a comedy because it is, you and, know. And, and you thought 16 Candles was all about discovering uh, oneself <laughs> or. Or, or was it um, that one movie, Leah Thompson? It's like, and uh, oh my gosh. It's Wait, like, which movie was that? Are you talking about Back to the Future? No, 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 no. This is like afterwards. It was some um, casual something. And uh, oh my gosh. Oh, it's like, I don't think I it, know it, that. 
That's 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 okay. It, it, you're starting to jog my memory, which is great too, along the lines. And of course, um, you know, one day I have have some coffee as well too. So that should really <laughs> jog my memory. So I hope you like coffee. I do like coffee. <laughs> Oh, and I, I, not only do I like, and I like really high quality coffee. I've been to Italy a bunch of times and I have to say it has spoiled me because I really need the good quality espresso now. I can't do with any of the garbage. Um, but I do like coffee. And I also, it's funny because did you ever watch Comedians in Cars getting coffee? It's on Netflix. Yes, yes, I have. Seinfeld is in that. Jerry Seinfeld. Oh my gosh. That's so, that's something. Coffees and cars are comedians. Wow. <laughs> yes. So it's, I always laugh at the beginning of that show because he asks, like, do, he asks his guests most of the time, do you like coffee or do you drink coffee? And it's funny because some people really just don't. And I think to myself, yes, I definitely will always be up for coffee. Um, not late in the day, though. I don't, I don't really like it then. That's true. Of course, you know, I get up in the morning and uh, post my feed on Facebook. So I have to have coffee. But then when I come home, it's like, you know, just get myself going again. And, um, you know, interviews and everything else. But, you, you know, my preference is like I like to have coffee. It's like, you know, just straight. But then if I'm relaxed, just add a little chocolate to it, like the hot cocoa mix. It's like, you know, I'm just, I apologize for being cheap, but uh, it does work. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yum. Nothing. Oh, please. What's better than coffee and chocolate? Very little. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, that was the stuff that that made of many all oh, coffee and chocolate to get going for work, meat and potatoes, and um, you know, whatever else, apples and oranges, you know, stuff that just goes together, peanut butter and jelly. It's like it's the things you never separate, right? Or peanut butter and chocolate. Yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, my wife's a big Reese's fan, so I'll tell you. <laughs> I get it. I can relate. Yes, that's right. And of course, who would you say your favorite interviewers uh, were when you're, um, you know, growing up, you know, listen to radio interviews, TV shows and um, everything else, you know, who are some of your favorite interviewers? Hmm. Would you believe, I don't think anyone has ever asked me this question. And it seems like such a logical question. When I was growing up, I don't even know who I saw being interviewed or like which shows I would watch radio. I do remember back when I was working at comedy central, just kind of circling back to that. I remember that during the day I would put on this talk radio station. It was on AM and I would listen to a psychologist take calls, um, from, you know, just people with their problems. And that's really it in terms of radio. I was never a big radio person. Um, and I think I probably, I probably watched Oprah here and there, but I was never a big Oprah viewer either. I don't know. But then when I started listening to podcasts, that's when I really started diving into other people interviewing. So right now, still, I listen to uh, Mark Marin. Uh, he has WTF. I think he's a great interviewer. He has gotten better and better over time. I listen to Terry Gross, who hosts Fresh Air. For I NPR. remember Terry Gross. Yes, I, I was in. Um, I was going to school in uh, Carbondale when Terry Gross came out of Fresh Air. That's a fantastic program. Yeah, she's really good. And I've noticed uh, that my style is different from hers because she's much more, I think, formal with her questions. And I find it so fascinating that she interviews everybody over the phone, which to me, I see everybody in person. So mm -hmm. every one of my episodes has been recorded in person because for me, connecting with somebody in person is, it's just so much easier in person. I love a good phone call too. You know, you can see we're, we're doing great, but um, I do really like to, when I'm hosting the show, I like to meet them in person. So I'm pretty much stunned that she's done all of fresh air uh, over the phone. That's pretty incredible. I have to say this as a radio person since 1982, you know, starting at 18 years old, just giving you an idea of, um, you know, how I started. It was always a phone call. So it's like, you know, some people are just, you know, st tied to the landlines. Then along came ISDN. Now you got your um, cell phones. You can actually hook up phone calls to to um, to, to your portable mixer. And of course, you know, the Yeti mics, you just plug in and then videos. And now it's like Facebook Live and um combining everything all together now of course the question is it's like what's next yeah yeah i don't know it is great i love the technology of it um but for me and maybe it's the therapist in me too i just love sitting down face to face face with somebody i you know i can't get enough of it so mm -hmm. uh but it's good that we have options right we could do this way that way this works for one thing and the other works for the other Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm pretty amazed by Terry Gross. Now I have to say Charlie Rose was another one who I think was like, okay. Um, 
he, he was all right and not a bad interviewer. Um, Tavis Smiley was another one. Now I'm remembering watching him, but this is not that long ago. It's not like I grew up watching them. Mm-hmm. Um, although both of them are now off the air for a similar reason. Um, you know who's, well, I've watched a lot of his interviews, but I'm not going to go out and say that his style is anything that I would follow. But James Lipton, Inside the Actor's Studio, that show, have you ever seen Inside the Actor's Studio? Inside the Actor's Studio. I've heard of it, but I don't recall watching it. Okay, so that I think was on Bravo for a while. Now it's moving to Ovation and he's not part of it anymore. But um, he has interviewed all the biggest like De Niro for a long and long uh, interview. Um, De Niro, uh, Bradley Cooper was on. He was a student of the actor studio. It's it was affiliated with this acting company called the actor studio, which a lot of the greatest actors of all time uh, were Uh, involved with but anyway he would have these long interviews but he would ask a lot of the same exact questions to everybody so i'm not a big fan of that but i would watch all of those interviews and what are your thoughts on larry king okay larry king again i didn't watch too many of his but i've seen a few of his interviews and i say good job and i don't remember the last time that i listened to him or saw him but i do think that he was kind of real um which i appreciate i like a person who can just be a real interviewer if you know what i mean and that reminds me also of barbara walters right so i think i probably watched larry king and barbara walters a long time ago but i'm just not remembering what they were like Mm -hmm. so i can't i right now i almost feel like I don't even know how they are. I haven't heard them in so long. How are mm-hmm. they? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember the phone calls will say, New York City, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and of course, you know, sometimes getting into arguments, sometimes getting into debates, but, you know, ask the really good questions, a huge sports nut. And I thought to myself, if I were to go up and talk to Larry King about football, we'd be there for like hours and hours. My wife would be like, come on, Mike, let's go. Or kids like, come on, get we go. Or, Larry King's wife yells, can't we go? <laughs> we yeah. just go on for hours. He's that type of person. Once you hit his button on his interest, he'll go forever. Hmm. I like that. I think it would actually be fun to interview him. That he would be he would be an interesting guest. We should both try to get him for our shows. You, you know what? I think that'd be a great challenge as well, too. And of course, you know, you know, just a couple of minutes here. We know you're very busy, but love to have you back on again, too. And uh, I wouldn't mind getting on your show, too. I don't know if I'm not that famous or do I really want to be famous? I mean, it's going to be hard to say, but <laughs> <laughs> and, and just a couple of things. Who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Um. Yeah. Gee, Mike, I have to tell you, you're asking some questions that I haven't been asked before. And again, they're very logical, but I haven't been asked them. So that's really good. I'm impressed. Um, Who has been the biggest influence? I have to tell you, I mean, this is going to sound weird and I don't want to sound self-centered, but I have to be honest. I've always driven my own career. I've been self-taught in a lot of things. So yes, I have a master's in psychology, but I taught myself how to open a practice. Yes, I was a journalist for a long time, but I have no journalism degree. So I learned it by doing it and by researching it and by asking questions and figuring it out. Podcasts, same thing. I didn't know anybody who was doing podcasts. So I figured out how to do it. So I tend to be the driver when I see something that I like or that I'm interested in. I just I'm very self-driven. So it sounds so egotistical. I hate to say it, but I'm going to be honest. I think really I'm the biggest influence. I don't think there's anybody who has really led me in any direction. I don't usually reach out to people to ask for help, which I probably should, but I I haven't. That was amazing. How did it feel about doing your first podcast? Oh, I was a nervous wreck, of course. My first podcast didn't even make it on the air because I was such a newbie. I didn't get it. You can't go and meet Ralph Mouth from Happy Days, otherwise known as Donnie <laughs> Most. You can't go meet him in a bar and grill where there's music in the background. So, But I did that. So I met him in New York City, and we went to a bar and grill across the, the street from his hotel And I, because I hadn't planned the place. I really didn't get it that I needed to get um, a quiet studio or a place a room or something so I, we I kind of winged it oh let's go across the street to this place and uh the conversation was great and the recording went fine with the exception of the fact that there was music in the background and it, it was so loud that i really couldn't even air it so that was a goof up 
Oh, that's okay. At least you got some history in your belt. And uh, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Um, re- regarding what specifically? Um, just best advice, you know, just anything in life or career or anything that comes to mind. You are just um, goals and everything. You know, what's the best advice you can give? Okay, or, so for I encouragement. Think- Generally speaking, I think that what I have learned by interviewing so many successful people and inspiring people and also through my own journey is that you are going to be knocked down over and over again. And you're going to hear the word no. And there are going to be difficult times when you want to give up and not keep going. But the people who make it are the ones who keep, who get up again. They just brush off their knees or whatever, and they keep going. And they don't let the no's and the discouragement stop them from going for what they want. So I would say I've seen it happen. I've seen it so many times. And I think that's what really uh, makes the difference. And I hope that everybody does that. No matter that is, what the no matter what the goal or the uh, the dream is. That is amazing. Kara Mayer Robinson, just want to thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. She's a host of the Really Famous Podcast at reallyfamouspodcast.com. And um, just lastly, what are some of your upcoming projects? What's your website? And how do people contact you? And where can they access your program? Okay, so Really Famous will continue to air new episodes every Monday with the occasional repeat, but every Monday and new videos on the YouTube channel every Sunday or a little bit more often. And you can find everything, links to everything at reallyfamouspodcast.com. Episodes coming up that are very exciting are Danny Aiello and Beverly D'Angelo, among other famous people. And social media like definitely hit me up on social media i get really into talking to fans that way i love it and i post all kinds of fun things pictures behind the scenes videos funny videos some foolish videos where i make a fool out of myself (laughs) Uh, you can find me instagram is my favorite i tend to post the most there and talk to fans the most there if you go onto instagram just look for me at really famous podcast i'm also on twitter at cara that's k-a-r-a one to one and I'm on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash Kara Mayer Robinson. And I love talking to new people, people who listen to the show, people who were wondering, have questions. I love it. I interact. So fire away or just email me at reallyfamouspodcast at gmail.com. That is amazing. Kara, just want to say thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. I learned a lot of things from you. And do me a favor, keep this up to date and look forward to having you on again soon. You've been fantastic. Thank you, Mike. This was really a lot of fun. And congrats on the, uh, the different questions. And it was very conversational. I really do appreciate that. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. Also, become a sponsor of the program and or donate today at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of The Mike Wagner Show.